Things you should not do to any woman's stoicism. Have you ever found yourself bending over backwards, changing who you are, or sacrificing your own happiness just to please a woman? You're not alone. Many men find themselves in this scenario, mistakenly believing that this is the key to harmony and affection. But what if I told you that there's a wisdom dating back thousands of years that suggests a different approach? Yes, I'm talking about stoicism. Today we're diving deep into the heart of stoic philosophy to uncover six principles. You should never compromise for women or anyone else for that matter. This isn't about playing the blame game or suggesting you shouldn't care about the women in your life. On the contrary, it's about understanding how to care in a way that's healthy, respectful to both you and them, and ultimately more fulfilling. Imagine this. You've canceled plans you were excited about because she hinted she wanted to do something else. You've twisted your values to match hers even when it felt wrong. Or maybe you've lost touch with friends because she didn't like them. Sounds familiar. These scenarios don't lead to the healthy, balanced relationships we crave. Instead, they pave a one-way street to resentment and loss of self. But fear, not for stoicism, offers a guiding light. Let's explore how to navigate the complexities of relationships without losing yourself in the process. Ready? Let's embark on this journey together. 1. Sacrificing your personal freedom in the throes of passion or the desire to please. It's alarmingly easy to compromise our autonomy. You might cancel plans. You were looking forward to suppress your interests or even alter your viewpoints to align with someone else's expectations. It feels like love, but is it really? Stoicism invites us to question these sacrifices. Are we giving up our personal freedom for affection? Or are we nurturing a relationship where both individuals can flourish independently? Think about it. Your integrity and freedom are priceless. They're the very essence of your being. When you trade them for someone's approval, you're not just losing a part of yourself. You're also setting a precedent for the relationship that's unsustainable and unhealthy relationships according to Stoicism, should not be about losing oneself but rather about mutual growth, respect, and understanding, all of which are grounded in the freedom to be oneself. So before you bend your will to fit into someone else's world, pause and reflect. Are you acting out of love and respect? Or are you sacrifice singular autonomy out of fear and need for approval? Remember a relationship built on the foundation of mutual respect for each other's freedom and individuality is not just strong, it's enduring. Let's not trade up priceless freedom for fleeting approval. Instead, let's strive for relationships that honor and celebrate our autonomy, guided by the timeless wisdom of Stoicism. Who neglecting your personal growth? Imagine for a moment you're on a path, your path weaving through a forest dense with the foliage of life's demands and expectations. Each step forward is a step towards self-improvement, wisdom, and ultimately virtue. Now imagine constantly stepping off your path to tread someone else's, putting their needs, their goals, above your own. It's not just a detour, it's a diversion from your personal growth. This, Epictetus would argue, is a misuse of our capacity for reason and a neglect of our personal development in the context of relationships, especially those where we might find ourselves overly invested in pleasing a partner. It's crucial to remember this stoic lesson. Compromising your own development or putting someone's needs constantly above your own can not only hinder your progress, but can also lead to a loss of self. The Stoics didn't preach self-improvement as a means to a selfish end, but as a way to become better humans for ourselves and for those around us. By neglecting our personal growth, we're not just stalling on our path we're also depriving our partners of the best version of ourselves. After all, how can we truly contribute to the happiness and well-being of others if we're not cultivating our own virtue and wisdom? Epictetus' teachings remind us that the focus on self-improvement and wisdom isn't a solitary pursuit, but one that enriches our interactions and relationships. It's about striking a balance, ensuring that while we're supportive and caring, we're not sacrificing our own growth at the altar of someone else's needs. 3. Suppressing your emotions Imagine holding a beach ball underwater. The more you push it down, the more forcefully it'll pop back up, often in unexpected ways. Similarly, 
when we suppress our emotions for the sake of maintaining peace in a relationship, we're not resolving anything. We're merely postponing the inevitable explosion of feelings. This is not the Stoic way. Stoics advocate for a healthy relationship with our emotions, one where we acknowledge, understand, and manage them, not one where we deny their existence. Suppressing your feelings or ignoring your emotional needs for the sake of a relationship is not just unhealthy. It's unsustainable. It leads to a buildup of resentment, misunderstandings, and ultimately, a disconnection from not only your partner, but also from yourself. The Stoic approach is to face our emotions head on, to examine them with reason, and to express them in a constructive manner. It's about finding the balance between emotion and reason, ensuring that neither is given unchecked reign. Communication is a cornerstone of this philosophy. Being honest with yourself and communicating your feelings openly are not signs of weakness but of strength and self-awareness. Marcus Aurelius, in his meditations, emphasized the importance of self-reflection and honesty in all aspects of life, including our emotional world. For losing your independence, Seneca, with his incisive wisdom, cautioned us against allowing our peace and happiness to become overly dependent on external factors, including relationships. This isn't to say that we shouldn't cherish and nurture our connections with others, but rather that we should not anchor our entire sense of self-worth or happiness to them. Consider the image of a tree. It may lean towards the sun, enjoy the benefits of the rain and even support other life forms. Yet its growth, strength and very survival depend on its roots and the nourishment it draws from within the soil. Similarly, when we tether our happiness or self-worth to someone else, we're like a tree that relies on an external source for its stability. The moment that source wavers, we risk toppling over. Seneca's warning invites us to deepen our roots, to find strength and nourishment from within ourselves. Cultivating independence is not about isolating ourselves or issuing emotional connections. On the contrary, it's about building a foundation so strong within ourselves that our relationships become sources of joy and growth rather than crutches or cages. It means engaging deeply with our interests, pursuing our goals, and cultivating a sense of self that is resilient in the face of life's inevitable changes and challenges. Finding contentment within is a journey one that requires introspection, honesty, and sometimes the courage to face our own shadows. It's about acknowledging our desires, fears, and dreams, and understanding that while others can complement our journey, they cannot be our sole paths to fulfillment. This internal contentment becomes a wellspring of strength, not just for ourselves, but also for our relationships. When we're not looking to someone else to fill our voids, we engage with them from a place of completeness, not lack. 5. Committing something to pleaser. Imagine, if you will, a scenario where you're asked to engage in something that clashes with your core beliefs or personal interests. It could be as simple as pretending to enjoy a hobby that doesn't interest you, or as complex as making life choices that don't align with your aspirations or ethics. Stoicism teaches us the value of living in accordance with nature, our own nature. This means acknowledging and respecting our likes, dislikes, values and principles. When we stray from this path for the sake of another's happiness, we not only lose our authenticity, but also erode the foundation of trust and respect in the relationship. Seneca, a Stoic philosopher, eloquently spoke of the inner fortress that each man must build and defend. It's a metaphor for our core self, our principles and our virtues. To compromise these for temporary affection, or to avoid conflict is akin to leaving the gates of our fortress unguarded. True enduring connections are formed not through self-betrayal, but through mutual respect and understanding of each other's authentic selves. It's about finding common ground, while standing firmly on your own. The Stoic approach isn't one of rigidity, but of profound self-awareness and integrity. It encourages us to ask ourselves, is this action in harmony with my true self? Does it serve my virtues of wisdom, courage, justice, and temperance? When the answer is no, it's a call to pause and reflect. It's a reminder that love and respect both for ourselves and from others flourish in the light of authenticity, not in the shadows of compromise and conformity. So before you commit to something solely to, 
please consider the stoic wisdom that counsels us to honor our essence first. It's not about selfishness. It's about self-respect. It's about building a relationship where both individuals are encouraged to be their best and truest selves. This doesn't diminish the love you share. It deepens it, creating a bond that's not just about the pleasure of the moment, but about the joy of a short journey towards growth and understanding. 6. Ignoring Reason for Passion Imagine your relationship as your passion can be the wind in your sails propelling you forward with exhilaration and speed. However, without the rudder of reason to guide you, that same wind could send you crashing into the rocks. Stoics like Epictetus taught that we should not be slaves to our impulses, but masters of them, steering our lives with wisdom and foresight. This doesn't mean stifling our desires, but understanding them, questioning them, and aligning them with our deeper values and goals. In the throes of a passionate relationship, it's easy to let emotions dictate our actions to make compromise. Is that conflict with our core beliefs? Or to ignore red flags that we would have noticed if not blinded by passion? Here lies the wisdom of the Stoics. They remind us that reason should be the lens through which we examine our feelings. Ensuring that our actions and relationships are not just reactions to fleeting emotions, but choices made with clarity and foresight. This stoic principle doesn't just apply to navigating conflicts or making big decisions. It's also about the daily choices we make in our relationships. It's choosing to communicate openly rather than react. Defense is simply to show patience instead of frustration and to seek understanding before making assumptions. By letting reason guide these moments, we cultivate a relationship that's not only passionate, but also resilient respectful, and deeply connected. If you found this video insightful, please like, share, and subscribe for more philosophical guidance and personal growth strategies. And don't forget to comment below with your thoughts or experiences related to stoicism and relationships. Until next time, stay virtuous.